Hey, I don't know uh, about you, but personally, I am not the biggest traveler in the world. Uh, Jamie, she loves to travel. She loves to travel all over the world. If we could go to Europe every year, she would be in heaven. For me, I could stay in Benicia, California my whole life, and I'd have no issues, no problems. It'd be totally fine for me. But even though she is a really big traveler and loves traveling, and maybe even if you are a big traveler, the one thing for her is uh, over the time of the vacation or trip, there comes a point where even though she really enjoys traveling, there comes a point where she wants to come back home. She wants to sleep in her own bed. I don't know if you've ever been in that place in a vacation before where you were like totally loving it the first three days and you were just having the time of your life. You were eating amazing food. You know, you were going on all the rides at Disneyland. Whatever the vacation was, you were loving it. And then four or five days in, maybe six, seven days in, you kind of got to this point where you're like, ah, I'm ready to go home now. Like, I want to sleep in my own bed where there's no parasites, where there aren't these weird just things going on in the room. Like, I just want to be comfortable in my own home where a stranger didn't sleep in it two days before I did. You know, like, I just want to be where I belong. And I think all of us, deep down inside, have this longing for home. We have this longing for a place to belong, a longing for somebody or some place to just say, that's where I live, that's where I belong. But even when it comes to our earthly homes, the homes that we come back to after school every day, even those fall short, right? I mean, all of our homes are imperfect with our our families and our dynamics there. I mean, only God knows how often we get into random little fights that don't aren't about anything with our siblings or our our moms or our dads. Or you don't even have to look uh, so far as the the fires that happened not too long ago and how your home could be taken away from you in an instant by a natural disaster. But we have this longing for home, yet our earthly homes don't fully fill that. And the reason they don't fully fill that is because you were made for a better home. A heavenly home. And that's what I want us to talk about tonight. Tonight I want us to talk about how heaven is your home. How heaven is your home. And as we continue this series that we've been calling I Am, we've been looking at these different statements in the Gospel of John where Jesus says, I am, and then he tells us about who he is. And tonight, as we look at this next I am statement of Jesus, we're going to be in John chapter 14. And we're going to be looking at how heaven is your home. So if you have your fake Bibles on your phone or your real Bibles, you could turn to John chapter 14. We're going to be looking at verses 2 and ver- th- all the way through verse 6. John 14, starting in verse 2 through verse 6. And it says this. Jesus says, My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, and here's the I am part. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so we're just going to look at three quick points today about how heaven is your home. So let's look at the first one. The first point is this, is that heaven is a home with many rooms. I love this point. Heaven is a home with with many rooms. The second verse we just read, Jesus, he says, my father's house has many rooms. What is the father's house in this passage that he's talking about? He's talking about heaven. And when he's talking about heaven, he's saying that heaven has many rooms. This is good news. This is good news that heaven has many rooms, that heaven has enough room for you, it has enough room for me, it has enough room for anybody. Now, if this verse said, my father's house has limited space, or 
my father's house has just a, a little space, then only a select few would be able to get into heaven. Only certain people would be able to get into heaven. Certain people that maybe, whether they're smart enough, religion, religious enough, good looking enough, whatever it is. But this verse says the exact opposite. It says that there are many rooms in heaven, meaning in heaven there will be all races, there will be all backgrounds, and there will be people from all different struggles. There are many rooms in heaven. I think some of us, we're going to get into heaven, and we're going to be shaking hands with people, seeing people we knew and on earth, and we're going to see somebody, and we're going to be like, whoa, what the heck? How the heck did you get in here? I would have never thought I would see your face in here. Like, you, like, what? You, you made it? Like, you made it here? And why did they make it? It's because heaven has many rooms. The Father's house has many rooms. It has enough room to hold anybody. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. There is room in the Father's house for you. You don't get into heaven, and I, I, I want you to remember this. We're going to put it up on the screen. I want you guys to remember this. It's as simple as this. is that it's not about religion. It's about the room. Somebody say that. Say, it's not about the religion. It's about the room. Just say it. I like that. It's not about the religion. It's about the room. You getting into heaven isn't about how good you are. It's not about how smart you are. It's not about how much of the Bible you know. It's not about whether you had a good week or a bad week. It's not about religion. You getting into heaven is based solely on the fact that there is enough room for you to be there and that God makes the room in heaven for you to be there because he has room in his heart for you because he loves you. He loves you so much that he has made room for you in heaven. And isn't that the best news? That God lets broken, messed up, jacked up sinners like you and me into heaven? Like that's the best news ever. And some of you in here maybe you're going through struggles right now and there are times where you maybe wouldn't say it out loud because it's embarrassing to say it, but sometimes you doubt God's love for you. Or maybe sometimes you even doubt God himself. God, are you even real? And you, you doubt his faithfulness in your life. God, why are you letting this happen to me? Why are you letting me go through this hardship? But when you look at this verse and you remind yourself that there are many rooms in heaven, that no matter what you're going through, no matter what your struggle is, no matter what your sin is, God still made room for you. He still loves you and he still wants to know you. And if you've called on Jesus, if you believe in Jesus, then there's a room for you in heaven. If you called on Jesus, you believe in him, and you've said, God, I know that I need your forgiveness of my sins. I know that I can't make it without you. If you've done that, and you've sincerely given your life to Jesus, there is a room for you in heaven with your name on it. Isn't that good news? That when, when your life on earth is over, when you die, there is a place that God has just for you. Because he loves you. However, notice this verse it says that there are many rooms, but it doesn't say that there's a room for everyone. Why is that? Is it because uh, heaven has a seating capacity, right? And God's like, oh, we're maxed out. All the seats are filled up. We can't fill the seats in heaven. We're maxed out. No, that's not why. The reason is because some people, although God offered them a room, they didn't take it. This uh, coming June, my dad and uh, my whole family, they're going, they do, they do this yearly trip where they go to Hawaii, which is a form of heaven in my opinion. I don't know about you if you've ever been to Hawaii, but Hawaii is a form of heaven for me. I love it. I think it's heaven on earth. And my dad and my family, they're all going to Hawaii this next June. And my dad, he invited Jamie and I to go for free. He was going to pay for our flights. He was going to pay for us to stay in a room. He, knowing him, he'd probably pay for most of our meals. So I was getting like a thousands of dollars worth trip that I would just, I would love to go on. I'd get to go there for free. He had a room for me and everything. And I actually ended up having to decline 
to go to that vacation because I've, I'm just too busy this summer and I, I don't have the time to go to Hawaii with him, even though he made room for me. And the reason I'm not going to Hawaii isn't because my dad didn't want me to be there. It's not because he didn't make room for me. It's not because he didn't want to pay for me. It's not because he didn't love me, but it was because I didn't have time. I didn't respond in the way that would allow me to go. And it's the same with heaven. God can make room for anybody. Jesus certainly loves everybody. He died for everybody. But there's only a room for you if you respond. And the beautiful part about the gospel is the Bible says that call on the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Call on the name of the Lord and you have a room. It's reserved and it's permanent. There's nothing you can do to unearn your spot in heaven. It's not like God saw your worst thing that you did this week and he's like, oh, I'm erasing their name. They're off my list. I'm going to give their room away to somebody else. No. No matter what you did this week, if you sincerely are a Christian, you've given your life to Jesus, there's nothing you can do to change his mind because that's how much he loves you. Heaven has many rooms. Here's a second point about how heaven is your home, is that heaven is where God is. Oh, good job, Josh, Captain Obvious. <laughs> heaven is where God is. It's obvious, but it's really important to think about. The third verse that we read in the beginning, John 14, 3, it says this. Jesus, he says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. The main part about heaven is for you to be taken where God is. The main part of heaven is not for you to be taken to a place where you're not sick anymore. It's not to be taken to a place where there are streets of gold and you eat good food and have a good time. Where, by the way, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of good stuff like that in heaven. But the main thing about heaven is heaven is about you being where God is and seeing Him and enjoying relationship with Him. That's the reason why you were created. You were created to know and to love God in a relationship. But we all have sinned and messed up. And as a result, that relationship was broken. That's exactly what Adam with, a, happened with Adam and Eve in the garden. They sinned and they messed that up. When they originally created in the garden, it was heaven on earth. They had perfect relationship with him. It said that God walked in the garden with them. But when they sinned, that messed everything up. And when you sinned, that messed everything up in your life. And that's the whole reason why Jesus came. Jesus came not only so your sins could be forgiven and you could feel like you don't have guilt, but mainly he came on the cross and died for your sins in your place so that he could have a relationship with you. Oftentimes we, we focus on the part about Jesus dying for our sins and how it can make us feel like we don't have guilt and how it can make us feel happy. And that is certainly good, but we can't forget the why behind the forgiveness. The reason he forgave us is so that we could know him. The reason he forgave us is so that we could have a relationship with him. And so what I want to tell you is that when it comes to heaven, don't focus on the possessions in heaven. Focus on the person in heaven. Don't focus on everything perfect in heaven, but focus on the perfect person in heaven. Because all the good stuff in heaven that we're going to have, it's going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. But Jesus is the greatest treasure out of all the good things that will be in heaven. Jesus is the most amazing, wonderful, most enjoyable thing that you will have in heaven. It won't be that you won't be uh, ever sick anymore. It won't be that you won't have any homework anymore. It won't be that you're phone, you know, will sometimes die on you and you need it the most. It won't be any of those things. The thing that will be best in heaven is that you will see Jesus face to face. And he'll look you right in the eyes and he'll say, my son, my daughter, I love you. Welcome home. Let's start this party that's going to go on forever. That's going to be the best part about heaven. If you, and I want you to ask this question because I remember a pastor a while ago, he asked me this question and it really challenged me. And whenever I think about it, it still really challenges me in my heart. And he said this. He said, if right now you could go to heaven 
and everything would be perfect. Right? All these things of no more sickness, no more bad internet, no more cats. I'm kidding. <laughs> Actually, I don't know. I doubt cats will be in heaven because cats are not heavenly. Um, but, you know, all these things in heaven. But if you could have all this perfection in heaven and not have Jesus there, would you still be happy? Would you still be happy? Ask that question. Honestly, in your heart, would you still be happy in heaven if Jesus wasn't there? Because here's the thing. How you truly answer that question in your heart shows where your value system is. It shows where your greatest treasure is. It shows if you value comfort over Christ. And I can assure you that Jesus is the greatest treasure. He's the best thing that you will have in heaven. Think of it this way. If you were able to go on like the best vacation ever, like just think right now of like your dream vacation, wherever it is, whether it's Hawaii like me or maybe it's something like in Europe or wherever. Just think of your dream vacation right now. You have unlimited, just the best food that you could ever have. It's awesome. You have like uh, just all these great things, unlimited. But the only thing was is you had to be there by yourself forever. That no people with you, just by yourself. Would you rather be there or normal life? Probably normal life. Because you would go crazy if you were just by yourself all the time. They've done studies on this. When people are completely isolated from others and not in relationship with people, they're, they kind of start to lose it a little bit. And see, it's kind of the same thing in heaven. It's not about just having all the right things. Because if you have all the right things, but you're not connected to the right person... It's completely meaningless. And it's the same thing here in your life. Jesus said in the Lord's Prayer, He said, Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Meaning, what you should value in heaven, which you'll value Jesus more than anything else in heaven, is what you should start valuing now on earth. Valuing Christ over comfort. Here's the third and final way of how heaven is your home. And this was the I am statement at the end, is that Jesus is the only way home. Jesus is the only way home. Verse 6, Jesus, here's the I am statement. He says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So it was statements like this, by the way, that got Jesus killed. This is why they killed Jesus. It's because he would say stuff like this, and it would drive people crazy. He would say stuff like, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. In other words, saying, if you've seen me, you've seen God, claiming to be God. He would say things like this, that you can't get to God unless you go through me. These are not just something some guy would say. This is not something some teacher would say. This is something only God would say. And this is the very reason why people killed Jesus, because they thought he was saying he was somebody he wasn't. And you know what? It was divisive. When Jesus said this, it was divisive in his day. But you know what? It's just as divisive now. It's just as divisive now. I was doing research on Americans and uh, non-Christians and Christians when it comes to this question, is Jesus the only way to God? Is Jesus the only way to heaven? Here's the statistics. 64% of Americans disagree with that statement. 64% of Americans say Jesus is not the only way. In other words, there are many ways to get to heaven. You can be a Buddhist, you could be a Mormon, you could be a Muslim, you could just be a good person and you'll get to heaven. 64% of Americans just disagree with that statement. But you know what's even crazier? This is the stat that made me want to, when I read it on my computer, I literally almost stood up and started yelling. Seriously, it, it, it ticked me off, man. It's, this is the stat. 48, 48, almost half, pretty much half, half of Christians also disagree with that statement. Half. Half of Christians, 48% of Christians do not think that Jesus is the only way. In America, that's not just the culture we live in, but that's Christian culture. People in the church. 
And Jesus, he makes it very clear here. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He makes it very clear. Good people, no. Other religions, no. It's only through me. I'm the only way. And you see, the reason why this is true is because Jesus is completely different than all the other religions. Christianity is completely separate from all other religions. When people say, oh, well, you know, all religions are equally uh, valid and all religions can get you to heaven. Can I just tell you, that's ridiculous because all religions disagree with one another. They all contradict one another and they say different things about Jesus. They say different things about how you could get to heaven. So how could they all be right and how could they all get you to heaven if they all disagree with one another? It's just, it's ridiculous. And oftentimes what I've found is people that think that all religions are the same and all religions can get you to, to heaven have simply just not studied all religions. Because if you actually studied every religion, you will come to find out that they believe things very differently. They're very, very, very different. And at the core, I, can, I could spend, a, this is a completely different sermon, I could con- spend a completely whole time on this, but in its essence, this is what makes Christianity different from all other religions, is that all religions are works-focused, and Jesus and Christianity are grace-focused. So again, every other religion is works-focused. Work hard, do well, be a good person, then God will bless you and take you to heaven. Go to church, pray every day, read the scriptures, then you'll go to heaven. But only if you do those things. If you don't do those things to a certain level, you're out. Christianity says, Jesus says, you're never good enough. But I am. And I died for your sins in your place on the cross and rose again three days later so that if you trust me, you'll be forgiven and free forever. Do you see the difference? Do you see the difference? It's completely different. Not all religions can get you to heaven. It's only one, and it's only Jesus. Maybe think of it this way. Uh, Let's put this map up on the screen that I have. I was thinking about this. I think it was kind of interesting. You might not know this, uh, but I actually live kind of near First Street here in Benicia, and I typed in Google, uh, First Street to New Harbor Community Church. Look, there we are, guys. We're on Google Maps. So cute. So cute. There we are. NHCC. And there it is. There's the map. Oh, I didn't notice this. There's a little traffic there. I wonder what happened. Um, Anyways, squirrel. Um, And there's the map. That's how you get to New Harbor Church. Now, there is only one road, right? East 2nd Street, if you didn't know the name of it. That's the main road right here that you uh, are going on before you turn into the parking lot. It's East East 2nd Street. Now, there is no other road that can really get you here to this church. If you try to walk this way, there's just kind of this little cliff thing, and you just see out into the water and mountains. It's actually a really beautiful view. I love to walk over there uh, in the middle of my work days sometimes to pray. But anyways, what I'm saying here is there's only one really road that if you want to get to New Harbor Community Church, if you want to get here, that's the only road you could take. That's it. There's nothing else. Like if I were to say, oh, I'm going to uh, get to church by uh, taking some other street. Maybe I'm going to take, um, I don't know, let's see some of the streets on here. Adam Street, or I'm going to take Mil- Military East, or I'm going to take Hillcrest Avenue, or I'm going to take, you know, whatever these other streets are, and I'm going to get to New Harbor Community Church on that street. You would look at me and you'd say, you're crazy. That road simply does not lead to New Harbor. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't lead that way. And it's the same with all other religions. Is They are other roads to take, but they don't lead you to where you need to go. They are other roads that people can take, and people honestly take them sincerely, and we should respect and we should love people of other religions 
But the truth is, is that there is only one road. There is only one God. There is only one way. There is only one person that can get us to heaven, that can get you to heaven, and it's Jesus. And so I want to close, and I want to just encourage you guys with this one point. And it's this, is that you're on earth to reserve your room and help others do the same. Let me say that again. You're on earth for mainly two reasons. To reserve your room and to help others do the same. The first part, you're here to reserve your room. Jesus made you and put you on this earth for you to know him, for you to become a Christian, to start a relationship with him, and to grow in relationship with him. And once you become a Christian, you're not just meant to just be like, oh, I got my ticket into heaven, I'm good. But you are called now to help others do the same. Once you become a Christian, you know, some people, they wonder, okay, what's the point of my life now? Why doesn't God just zap me to heaven? Well, because there's other people right now that aren't headed towards heaven. There's other people right now that are headed towards hell. And you're here to share Jesus with them. And you're here so that just like you have a room reserved for you in heaven, you can help them have a room reserved for heaven. And that's what our whole grow focus is about for this year. If you guys remember that when we went through that sermon series a while ago, grow, it's all about helping people reserve their room in heaven. And if you're a Christian, you're here to grow in your relationship with Jesus, but you're also here to help people reserve that room. Because Jesus wants everybody home. Jesus made everybody to be a son and daughter of his. And he wants you and he wants your friends and he wants your family members and he wants the person that you sit next to in your fifth period class. He wants all of them to come home. Let's pray. Jesus, I just thank you so much that you do desire all of us uh, to be a part of your family, that you, um, that you love us, uh, and you look past all of our fears, all of our failures, and all of our, our mess-ups and struggles. And Lord, I pray right now for anybody in here that maybe uh, has felt uh, just doubtful in their relationship with you, or maybe ashamed. Lord, I pray that they just be reminded of your love for them, and what you did for them, and the price you paid for them, so that they could have a home in heaven forever. And Lord, I pray that this group would also be just an, uh, a group of people that are just contagiously spread uh, your good news to their friends and to the rest of the world. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.